So I'm going to talk to you about some of the, the background of, uh, of radiation and radiation biology enough so you have some sense of the world in which this exists. Um, we all live in, in, within radiation. Radiation is all around us. It's a, it's a property of the environment. Um, it's a property of the universe. So we have the electromagnetic spectrum that, that you um, probably remember from your high school or college days. And there's varying wavelengths, um, and as the wavelengths get smaller, the frequency goes higher, and the energy they produce is more. So you go from radio waves to microwaves to infrared to ultraviolet. When you get to X-rays and gamma rays, there's enough energy in these, in these rays that they can actually cause biological damage. Um, there are atomic nuclei on the right, and uh, when there's an imbalance of neutrons and protons in the nucleus, these atoms are unstable, and they want to become stable, and they undergo radioactive decay. So there's a radiation source, something that's radioactive, um, and this is giving off radiation, and you can stick a little unit over it, a Geiger counter or some kind of counter, and you can get clicks. So exposure is what the radioactive material gives off. You have a, you have a monitor and you can, you can count the exposure. Contamination is what um, is particles of radiation that can be outside you, external contamination, or they can be inside you, internal contamination. We all have some radioactivity inside us, as, uh, as Mike will uh, talk to you about. Um, but when you have a, um, a, a radiation event and you ingest um, any uh, radioactive material, that's the only time you're actually radioactive. Dose is the amount of radiation your body receives, so if you're, you're sitting in a source that's giving off radiation, your body actually absorbs some of that, and that's what we translate into the term dose. So the major particles are alpha particles, beta particles, and gamma rays. And logically, if something has mass, and something has electrical charge, when it interacts with tissue, it's not going to go very far. So alpha particles have mass, they have charge, and you can stop them by a few cells deep. So, you, so alpha particles are not a problem at all unless they're internalized, and then um, they can create damage. Beta particles are, have mass and charge, but less than alpha particles, and they can, they can penetrate a little bit farther. And gamma rays, or these are the X-rays, uh, um, when you have a CT scan, these are the things go, that go all the way through you. They're, they're, they're lessened in intensity. Your body absorbs some as they go through, but they come out the back. Um, and that's where most of the uh, dose comes from when we talk about uh, radiation. So the radiation is called, that we worry about in nuclear events is called ionizing radiation. So what ionizing radiation does, it is strong enough so it knocks an electron, a negative charge, out of a molecule. So the negative charge is out and there's an imbalance between positive and negative, so this molecule is then ionized. The major target we're interested in is the lesions in DNA. So ionizing radiation can either directly or indirectly cause ionizations within DNA. And what often happens is you knock an electron out, there's a sea of electrons nearby, another electron gets put back in, and you get chemical restoration of the lesion. If that doesn't happen, the body can process uh, the, mut the mutation. So once the, can process the lesion, as shown on, on this uh, cartoon, so you get DNA damage, so you get something that ionizes radiation, and you get biochemical changes. There's, there's, ch there's uh, changes going on in the part of the cell that doesn't have uh, the nucleus. Um, and DNA damage, uh, the body has incredible proofreading ability. So if you think about evolution, um, fungi and all these little creatures were living on trees, getting radiated. So our cells have adaptation to radiation. We live in a sea of radiation, so the cells do know how to deal with it. If there's damage in DNA, there's a proofreading mechanism, it'll find the damage, it'll stop the cell from dividing. It says, wait a minute, I got some trouble here, let me stop, it goes through cell cycle rest. Um, it may say, boy, there's a lot of damage here, so I'm not gonna proceed anymore, and then the cell will go through a mitotic death. The cell will actually die from that damage. Um, there's a whole bunch of repair enzymes that try to fix up this lesion. They may be able to fix it up perfectly. There's two strands of DNA, so when the broken strand can say, well, I have a normal strand next to it, it can proofread off the normal strand, fix up the DNA damage, and you have a perfectly normal cell. Um, it can try to fix it up and say, oh, there's too much damage here, and the cell, believe it or not, every one of our cells has the ability to actually commit suicide. There's a uh, process called apoptosis where a cell says, boy, I have too much trouble inside me, I better get rid of myself, and the cells undergo this thing called programmed cell death. 
What you worry about is a small amount of residual damage that isn't enough to kill the cell, but um, has a sustained mutation. Now, what's, ever, what's also interesting is cells talk to each other. So if one cell has some damage on it, it changes its cell membrane, and it tells its, its neighbors, or it secretes a molecule that tells its neighbors, you know, I'm, something's going on there. And the cells nearby can actually influence the fate of this damaged cell. They can call in the immune response. They can actually kill that damaged cell. So there's a lot of checks and balances, even if you have a mutation, that the body does to take care of, uh, of radiation injury. Um, now, these are the processes that after the radiation goes through, these biochemical changes take time to repair. In fact, uh, a cell can, that's radiated could tell its daughter cells that it's radiated. It turns on processes so it knows radiation was there and it communicates that. So the daughter cells actually know uh, something maybe in the environment to watch out for. So I'd love to show this because if I put this up, I can charge you a lot when you come to my office, give you a big bill. So, uh, so uh, well, 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 when I was a kid, and when I, I think one of the favorite shows I, I saw was one of these science shows where it's called The Power of Ten, where you start from outer space and you keep going by factors of ten closer and closer and closer and closer, and eventually you get down to a single cell. And this is the Power of Ten chart for radiation. So when we talk about radiation therapy, and you, he you hear all these numbers that, that even we have trouble converting, you talk to the term millisieverts. The top row is 100,000 millisieverts. That is the range of doses that we use for radiation therapy. And when you have an acute whole body exposure that gives you the acute radiation syndrome, you're in that range of the hundred thousands of millisieverts. On the lower level, way on the left, you're in the one millisievert range. Those are the sort of numbers we talk about with background radiation. And when you talk about what the normal exposure is, it's in the three millisievert range. It's the, the normal annual exposure. So the numbers we'll be talking about here are very, very low numbers. These are not the numbers we use in cancer therapy. These are not the numbers um, you, you have when you get a high dose of radiation that causes you to get very, very sick. So we're talking about background, or slightly above background, that are in the low numbers in the power of 10. So as a radiation emergency planner, I have to think about um, what dose um, people are going to get. And this is sort of the curve and I call it a curve or not because the shape of the curve is really up for debate and it's a really important concept to get. So at the very high doses of above 10 sievert, those are, those are lethal doses. Um, you may get those in a reactor accident where someone is almost inside the reactor. Um, that will lead to radiation-induced death. The acute radiation syndrome, which is about two to four or five sieverts, these are the kinds of doses we use for bone marrow transplantation. These are very, very high doses. Um, but people can survive those with good medical management. As you get to lower doses, you begin to worry about um, some cancer risks, so that's what I call the epidemiology range. When you get in those doses, you, you, you want to follow up people. If they had exposure, they had a dose, you want to track them so you can see what happens to them and give them the, uh, the appropriate management. Um, when you get down to the worker limits, so um, acute radiation syndrome is four sieverts. The worker limit, if you're working in a nuclear power plant per year, is 0.05 sieverts. Um, the annual exposure limit for non-workers is 0.01 sieverts, and background is 0.003. So we're talking about very, very low doses. Now, when we assume radiation causes mutation, we, we, we don't exactly know the shape of the curve in the lower left. There's a lot of information to suggest that if I give a cell a slight dose of radiation, come back an hour or two later and give it another dose of radiation, that cell has an adaptive response. It will respond better to, to uh, fix up the radiation damage. So some people say at very low doses, in fact, um, the cell can be less resistant, more resistant to radiation therapy. It gets a little dose, it gets another little dose, it turns on its repair processes. Um, since we don't know exactly what happens in these dose ranges, there's a lot of debate. We assume linearity. We assume that every dose is added on to every other dose to give you that effect. So that's called the linear no threshold, and that's the straight line with the, with the red arrow on it. So to get, look at the time course of events um, after radiation, um, again, we, we're at the millisieverts on the top. At 10,000 millisieverts, you have the central nervous system syndrome. That's a very high dose that's likely to be fatal. 6,000 millisieverts is a gastrointestinal um, dose range where it'll affect your gastrointestinal tract. You'll get sick from that within a week or so. At 3,500 millisieverts, you're in the bone marrow range, very survivable with treatment. At five to 10,000 millisieverts, you're in the organ dysfunction range where your lungs or kidneys may not function, and that can occur in years. 
What we worry about is secondary malignancy, so at the, when you get to one sievert or 1,000 millisieverts, um, there's roughly an 8% increased lifetime risk of developing a radiation-related cancer. These are long latencies. They may take 20 or 30 years to develop, and these are the sort of things you, we watch for. This is 1,000 millisieverts is 8%. We're talking about three millisieverts as sort of the background numbers um, involved in this. So what do we do for medical care? Well, if you know someone's going to a high radiation environment, there's radiation protectors. Um, if someone gets exposed to radiation therapy, radiation that's internalized, you worry about uh, potassium iodine because if there's iodine in the, in the environment and there's radioactive iodine, the thyroid picks it up, thyroid concentrates iodine, that's what it does for a living up till your, about your teenage years. So you get the little iodine you take in concentrates in the thyroid. So what KI is, it's stable, it's cold iodine that you take a bunch of it and it blocks the transporters so the hot iodine can't get picked up in your thyroid. So what KI is, essentially it's outcompeting the, the hot iodine um, and it's a blocking agent. If someone goes on to get any uh, clinical problems, then that's, uh, that's called treatment. So points to remember, the dose range is you have to remember that all radiation isn't the same in the effect. There's background environment radiation, there's medical C CT scan radiation, which is a bit higher, therapy radiation, which is much, much higher than that. Very small amounts of radiation can be measured. So we can measure stuff that has no biological significance. What's bad about radiation is you can't see it. What's good about radiation is you can measure it. And you can, you can make your decisions based on scientific uh, measurements. Dose rate matters. One gray given over one year is different than one gray given over one second. Is the, the longer the time it takes to get it, the less effect it has. The body repairs it. When we talk at organ damage, the higher the dose you get, the more likely you are to have organ damage, and that's called a deterministic effect. When we talk about radiation-inducible cancers, the higher the dose, the more likely you are to get a radiation-inducible cancer. There's no specific radiation-inducible cancer. It looks like any other cancer, except the, the, the risk of it is higher, and you'll hear more about that in a bit. Um, when people get modest doses and you worry about that, you have to remember that late effects occur late, so people in significant dose ranges, you want to make sure they have long-term um, a follow-up and evaluation.